here we have an article that has to do with uh, computers it is going to take you for this journey in the five generations of computers and we have the history of uh, the five generations of computers the thing is that the other day I was talking about uh, vacuum tubes but, uh, but I really didn't know the correct way to say that vacuum tubes and I was saying that those were bulbs but actually not it's not the same vacuum, vacuum tubes are so different so this is why I looked for that information on internet and I found this information five generations of computers that is concerning with this the five generations of computers learn about the each of the five generations of computers and major technology developments that have led to the computing devices that we use today the history of computer development is a computer science topic that is often used to reference the different generations of computing devices each of one of five generations computers again each of each one of the five generations of computers is characterized by major technological technological development that fundamentally changed the way computers operate. Most major developments from 1940s to present day have resulted in increasingly smaller, cheaper, more powerful, and more efficient computing devices. What are the five generations of computers? In this Wikipedia study guide, you learn about each of the five generations of computers and the advances in technology that have led to the development of the many computing devices that we use today. Our journey is of the our journey of the five generations of computers starts in nine in 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 nineteen forty with vacuum tube syrup and goes to the present day and beyond with artificial intelligence systems and devices we have then getting started key terms to know the following 10 technology technology definitions will help you to better understand the five generations of computing computer microprocessor magnetic drums binary integrated circuit, semiconductor, nanotechnology, machine language, assembly language, artificial intelligence. We have first generation vacuum tubes, 1940 uh, till 1956. The first computer system used vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for memory and were often enormous, taking up entire rooms. These computers were very expensive to operate and in addition to using a great deal of electricity, the first computer generated a lot of heat, which was often the cause of mark functions. First generation computers relied on machine language, the lowest level programming language understood by computers to perform operations and they could only solve one problem at a time one problem at a time it will take operators days or even weeks to set up a new problem input was based on punch cards and paper tape and output was displayed on printout the Univac and the INIA computers are examples of first generation computing devices the Univac was the first commercial computer delivered to a business client, the U.S. Census Bureau, in 1951. We have here a picture, a Univac computer at the Census Bureau, image, image source, United States Census Bureau, recommended reading, 
Wikipedia INIAC definitions. Second generation transistor from 1956 till 1963. The world would see transistors replace vacuum tubes in the second generation of computers. The transistor was invented. The transistor okay, is is a uh, it's just one word. The transistor was invented at Bell Labs in 1947, but did not see widespread use in computers until the late 1950s. The transistor was far superior to the vacuum tube, allowing computers to become smaller, faster, cheaper, more energy efficient, and more reliable than their first generation predecessors more reliable than their first generation predecessors. So the transistor still generated a great deal of heat that subjected the computer to damage. Though the transistor still generated a great deal of heat that subjected the computer to damage, it was a vast improvement over the vacuum tube. Second generation computer still relied on punch card for input and print out for output from binary to assembly. Second generation computers move from cryptic binary machines languages to symbolic or assembly languages which allowed programmers to specify instructions in words. High level programming languages were also being developed at this time, such as early versions of COBOL and Fortran. These were also the first computers that store the instructions in their memory, which move from a magnetic drum to a magnetic car technology. The first computers of this generation were developed for the atomic energy industry. We have a picture invention of the transistor, December 23rd, 1947 was the day the transistor was first successfully tested. There were three important individuals behind the transistor's development, William Britton, John Barden, and William Shockley. An early Philco transistor in 1950s. Image source, vintage computer chip collectibles. Third generation integrated circuits. 1964 till 1971. The development of integrated circuit has the hallmark of the third generation of computers. Transistors were miniaturized and placed on silicon chips and called semiconductors, which drastically increased the speed and efficiency of computers instead of punch cards and print out users interacted with third generation computers through keyboards and monitors and interface with an operating system which allowed the device to run many different applications at one time with a central program that monitored, monitored that monitored the memory, computers for the first time became accessible to a mass audiences, audience because they were smaller and cheaper than their predecessors. Did you know an integrated circuit is a small electronic device made of semiconductor material? The first integrated circuit was developed in the 1950s by Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments and North and Robert Noyce of Fairchild Semiconductor. In the fourth generation, microprocessors, 1971 present. The uh, the fourth generation microprocessor, 1971 and present. The microprocessor brought the fourth generation of computers as a thousand of integrated circuits were built onto a single silicon chip. What in the what in the first generation field an entire room could now fit in the palm of the hand. The Intel 4004 chip developed in 19, 
71 located all the compu components of the computers from the central processing unit and memory to input output controls on a single chip. In 1981, IBM introduced its first computer for the home user, and in 1984, Apple introduced the Macintosh microprocessors also moved out of the realm of desktop computers and into many areas of life as more and, and more everyday products began to use microprocessors. As these small computers became more powerful, they could be linked together to form networks, which eventually led to the development of the Internet. Fourth generation computers also the development of graphical users interface interfaces that mouse and handheld devices here we have an example 1972 the intel 4004 processor intel's first microprocessor powered by biscom calculator biscom calculator and paved the way for the personal computer. Intel's first microprocessor, the 4004, was conceived by Ted Hoff and Stanley Masur. Image source, Intel timeline. Fifth generation com artificial intelligence, present and beyond. Fifth generation computing devices based on artificial intelligence are still in development, though there are some applications such as voice recognition that are being used today, the use of parallel processing and superconductors is helping to make of artificial intelligence a reality. Quantum computation and molecular nanotechnology will radically change the face of computers in years to come. The goal of fifth generation computing is to develop devices that respond to natural language input and are capable of learning and self-organization.